Hello everyone, this is Doug Hansgate. I'm here to do a quick little class on some of the changes that Adobe Photoshop has recently made in 2023. And um, I know everybody's excited about the AI technology in the new beta version, but this is going to be literally just talking about the graduated filter changes, which I'm so happy that Adobe's finally implemented. So without any further ado, I'm going to just jump into an image and show you some of the changes that Adobe's made. So this image, this image is an image that just kind of cries for um, a graduated filter. These, these young alligators, these are new hatchlings from this year. They're only, oh, maybe the big one is maybe 10, 11 inches long. Um, and um, the sibling here may be a little bit shorter. But let's take a look at this image. And I'm just going to jump over into Photoshop. So I'm going to hit Command E. I'm in Lightroom now. I'm going to just hit Command E or Control E and send it on over to Photoshop. And so here we are in the Photoshop. Um, and I'm going to move my location down here to the bottom left so that I stay out of the way because we've got the graduated filter up here. And what I want to do is I'm going to adjust and apply an adjustment first. So I'm going to step down and apply a curves adjustment. And let's just think about this for a second and imagine that um, I'm looking at the foreground and saying, boy, it'd be nice if I could kind of darken that foreground and even take a little bit of the contrast out of it, but just get that foreground under control. And now all I need to do is control that adjustment. So I have the adjustment over here in this layer. I need to control that adjustment with this mask. And this is where we would typically grab a gradient tool. And I'm going to just click on my gradient tool here. And um, in the past, we would have just dragged a gradient. We're going to choose to have a black and white gradient. And by the way, if you just hit the letter D, it'll give you the default, which is white and black. And if you choose to hit the letter X, it will invert them. If you don't like shortcuts, I know some people are, are egregiously uh, bothered by shortcuts. You can just simply click on this little icon, gives you the default. This will revert it. So that little triangle here. And again, this icon is to give you the default black and white. And this icon will invert those colors. So now we have a black on the foreground, white in the background. And if I look up here and I'm, I'm choosing a gradient and it's going to give me that white and uh, black, black to white transition, which is what I'm looking for, for a mask. And normally we would just drag it across and you say, oh, what happened? Well, we have a number of different gradients. Remember, I have a radial gradient. I also have a linear gradient. So I'm just going to hit Command Z to de deselect that and choose my radial or my linear gradient and do that same thing. And you say, well, wait a minute, that's the wrong direction. Um, I need to I need to change that. And in the past, we would have had to hit Command Z and then draw another gradient from the top. Um, in order to get the right gradient that we were looking for. And then we, we would have been stuck because we would have said, oh, well, that's, that's not really the exact placement. So I'm going to hit Command Z again and, and draw another gradient and try to get it a little bit better. And um, we would have said, okay, maybe, you know, maybe that's a close enough gradient. But with the new gradient tool in Photoshop, we now have the ability to change the angularity and the length of our gradient. We also have the ability to change the midpoint of that gradient. So we can change that 50% gray midpoint of that gradient to give us a gradient that is a little bit more balanced and a little more centric to what we're looking for in this image. Once we have that gradient established, the nice part about it is, is that I can come back over to my adjustment tool, so my curve, and I can adjust that curve now to kind of, uh, you know, now, now that I have that mask in place, I can control that curve nicely and say, look, you know, this is what I'm really looking for. Now, that being said, um, you can say, okay, you know, I like that. And then maybe you say, look, I want to adjust that curve. 
Well, in the past, we didn't really have this ability to adjust that curve too much, but now, as long as we're in the gradient tool and on that mask, so that original gradient is, is now there for us to, to be able to adjust and to play with, so we could say, look, we really want a really harsh transition, and maybe that maybe that 50% gray needs to be in the middle, um, and maybe I want it to be something a little bit more like this. That's totally fine because we can, again, go back to our adjustment. We can make some more adjustments. We can come back over and, and make more adjustments to this gradient filter, which is a huge bonus for us. Now, there's a couple of things that have also happened in this, um, in this upgrade to our gradient filter. And one of them is, let's just take a look at at our mask itself. So if I hold Alt or Option and click on the mask, we can see the mask. And um, so we have a nice, we have a nice gray mask going across here in a nice kind of smooth transition, um, you know, from our pure blacks down to our whites. White reveals black conceals, so we know that that we have a gradual transition from that that adjustment making no effect to the adjustment being totally visible. We also have up here different methodologies for that gradient. So I have right now it's set for perceptual, but I could go to linear. And when I do linear, what happens is it, it changes up the whole perception of that gradient, if I can use that word again. Um, it changes the gradient to a true linear gradient going from my endpoint, which is pure black, to pure white at the end, and a gradual gradient all the way through. Now, yes, I can still move my 50% gray point to change it, but you can notice the stark difference between that linear gradient and that perceptual gradient. The perceptual gradient is actually in place based upon our eye's perception to that gradient and how quickly it needs to fall off. We also have down here you go to the classic gradient. Now the classic gradient, it's, it starts a little bit deeper into the blacks and, and gives you the smoother gradient across there, but um, it is not, it's, it's, it's almost a halfway point between perceptual and uh, linear. However, this is this is the classic gradient that we all saw and used for many many years. Um, we now have the ability to go to a pure linear gradient, and we have the ability to keep it on perceptual. So, um, most people will find that the perceptual gradient is is kind of the place to be. Um, now. One thing that I will tell you is that right now, if you've noticed up on top, I am in Adobe Photoshop beta, but this is uh, available as part of Adobe Photoshop 2023, so don't, don't let the beta version here bother you on that. Um, let's take a look at our, our adjustment again, and now that we have that in place, I'm just going to tap over here, and I'm going to kind of figure out exactly just visually and perceptually where I want that transition to happen. Now, that's pretty nice, um, and that works okay. Um, but we also, have, we also have the ability to be able to add some more light, say, for example, into these shadows and do some things like that that we would do to this image. But um, predominantly not necessarily with a radial gradient or a linear gradient. So I'm going to just jump over here to another image. I'm going to close this image for a second. And, um, and then just jump back over to Lightroom. And I'm going to show you this image here, this tricolor heron. And this tricolor heron, um, the, the problem is, you know, nice shot of a tricolor, but we've got all of this all of this um, branches and, and scrub that's behind the tricolor um, as, as she's building her nest. And so let's send this one over, Command or Control E, send it to Photoshop, and in Photoshop, let's go ahead and do a different gradient with this. What I'm gonna do is just, oh, again, I'm just gonna make a basic curve just because I'm kind of a curves guy. I like, I like curves. And um, what I'm going to do is think about, again, kind of pulling things down 
except I want to use my masking and my gradient tool again to mask part of this this adjustment curve that I've made. So here's where I'm going to go to. I'm going to go to my radial gradient and I'm going to pull a radial gradient out around my bird and I can position it and I can change the change the gray point on it and um, you know maybe even make it a little bit bigger but whoops um, not a again perfect solution for this image because in fact um, you'll note that we could do this in Adobe Camera Raw, we could do this in Lightroom, select subjects, select background, um, do a, a conversion of a radial and a subject, an intersect, or you know, lots of other methods. This is not meant to be perfect, this is meant to show you that we do have the same adjustment capabilities with a radial gradient that we have with a linear gradient. Now you can also go ahead and say, well, look, maybe maybe what we need to do with this image is to apply a different gradient altogether. And so I'm going to just um, back off here, hit Command Z a couple times, take those, take those that uh, gradients off of my mask, and let's apply let's apply a a gradient that kind of looks like this now. You'd say, where, where in, in God's creation can I use something like this? And, and how do I use that type of a gradient? And again, I have the ability to change my 50% my, um, gray point. And what this is, is this is a, a gradient that actually goes from no adjustment all the way to pure black. And if we were to look at the mask itself, you'll see what happens. So we go from pure black, which gives me no adjustment, all the way around to full adjustment. And, you know, again, maybe not appropriate for this image, but certainly an interesting kind of approach to uh, what we might want to do with that image. Now, finally, let's, uh, let's look at this adjustment, and this adjustment is going to say, give me, give me um, a, let's just go to a vertical here, and um, let's make this on our mask instead of making it there. So you can see that I could take and say, bring out that, that band of light down through the middle. Again, maybe not the best selection choice for, uh, for this image. But again, I just wanted to give you an idea of some of the different options that we had available to us as far as a gradient tool and how these gradient tool adjustments work for us um, in, a, in a very, very um, interesting and new, uh, very powerful way for us. You'll notice that as I move this gray point, um, you'll see the gray point move over here, and I can change the smoothness of this gradient now. I can choose the blend type. I can choose the method of that, um, of that gradient. And of course, it's going to give me my angles. When I do something like this, it's going to give me my angles as well as my scale of the, of the image, whether I want to dither it, whether I want to reverse it. But, um, just to kind of give you an idea of this properties, where we're going with the gradient tool, and how this is going to certainly help us in a lot of our editing processes. Um, I think it's a, a huge tool for us. I think that this tool is really going to make a difference in some of our editing selections and editing choices. Um, however, it's a little late coming to the, to the game because of some of the masking functions that we have in Lightroom and Adobe Camera Raw. This looks a, a bit antiquated, um, and I'll admit that, but thank goodness that they finally done this to the gradient tool, and I'm happy for that. So um, if you've enjoyed this, uh, please follow me on YouTube. Um, I'm going to be starting a whole new series about uh, editing techniques and, and the tools available to us both in Lightroom and Photoshop. Um, and you can find out more from me by looking below in the content of the YouTube video. You'll see my website, um, the Guild website, which I run on a weekly basis, and um, some more information about me. Hope you enjoyed. Thanks.